<laughs> that one sings too. I'm not an air bubble. It's an air bubble in it. <laughs> Sink or float? Float. Not just float. That one floats. I've gotten into a clean this board. I think it's because they got warm so long. It's a now. So you guys get it. You guys get the pattern. Diet's floaty. Diet's float. So why do you think that is? <laughs> yes, it's the density. It's the density of the of the can because diet sodas contain aspartame and regular sodas contain sugar. And sugar is a heavier density than aspartame. In fact, most regular sodas have 38 to 41 grams of sugar in them. 38 to 41 grams of sugar equals 18 sugar packets. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, yeah, 10, 11, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, Aspartame is in a ton, it's actually in your jello too. It's in like a ton of your food products. Kids vitamins, a lot of kids vitamins. If you look at the back, it says aspartame. <laughs> so I know, it's, but I'm gonna talk about that in just a second about how horrible aspartame is. So we know that sugar's not good because look at how much sugar we've got in our body. But I mean, does that really justify drinking aspartame? No. So, no. Diet soda, I'm gonna start to, I'm gonna talk to you about this a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but who doesn't do it, right? <laughs> I know, who does all this? Totally, everybody does this, like buys all this food and people are like, oh my gosh, why? Why? Because aspartame actually causes you to crave other sweets. What happens is the aspartame goes down into your system and your system sends the cells after it and says, you're getting carbohydrates or sugars, which are really good for your body. Carbohydrates are nutri nutrition, nutrients. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Stumble a little bit. But anyways, um, <coughs> So your brain says, okay, well you need to attack that and use it for energy. But when it gets there, the aspartame is actually nutrient, you know, zero, and it throws it out. Actually, aspartame is processed in your body as a toxin. And so it's put through your kidneys as a toxin instead of as a nutrient. So your body actually goes back to your brain and it says, okay, we need nutrients because it was just pretty much tricked. Like we had you know, sugar there and then it was gone, so you want to eat more. So then you'll want to eat more candy and sweets and things that actually makes you crave more. There was actually a study done that found that people who, which is on your little handout thing, but, um, <laughs> people who drank diet soda after a certain amount of time ended up with a larger waist circumference than people who didn't. And it's if you drink three or more diet sodas a day for a seven year period, you are more than double at risk for gaining more weight. So, yes. Um, a mortuary guy says that nowadays it takes half as much as the amount of like stuff to put in you because you're already halfway there. dehydration. Caffeine, everybody knows all the awful things about caffeine, but here's another list in case you want to be reminded. It's a diuretic, causes frequent urination, stomach acid levels go up, headaches, anxiety, jitteriness, insomnia, we all know this. Contains carbonic acid and phosphoric acid. Carbonic acid rots your teeth. It's the chemical that rots your teeth. Phosphoric acid, though, is different. It's actually very unique to diet colas. I walk over here, you're like, how do you say It's unique to colas, phosphoric acid is. And what happens is it goes into your system, 
goes into your blood system and makes your blood more acidic. Once your blood is more acidic, your body wants to neutralize that, so it takes the hydrogen ions from it, and it looks for minerals in your body to bind it with, to get rid of it, to expel it. And it mostly goes after calcium. So if your, if your blood does not have calcium, and I don't know if all of you guys are drinking your milk and eating your cheese regularly, it'll actually extract it from your bones. And once it extracts it from your bones, then you're, you're going to have bone loss. So it says, rot your teeth and bones. So we're having bone loss because it causes weight gain and belly fat. <laughs> don't you love this? <laughs> it's just a diet. Who cares, right? How many times do you guys see this? We all know somebody who is like, there in the morning they wake up and they run and get their big old soda, and then they gotta go at lunch, and then they gotta go after, what they do whatever. <laughs> but it's just diet, so why? Who cares, right? <laughs> so we deal, zero calories. Is your husband here? No. Did he not come? <laughs> He's sick. Oh. <laughs> This is why she did it. He'd like it. Because <laughs> he said, really, what's wrong with diet Mountain Dew? Oh. I'm a diet Mountain Dew drinker. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so, of course, I put her on that whole. Yeah. <laughs> to say what's wrong with the zero calories. Zero calories, yeah. just whatever. So, in the study, like I said before, three servings or more a day double people's risk of being obese after seven years. I know it's seven years, so it's like a long time. Like, who cares, right? But, you know, it causes all these other problems. Slowest kidney function, resulting in a 30% decline in your kidneys, ability to filter blood. Your kidneys filter the waste and the toxins in your body. And so when your kidney function is slow, slowed down, it's, it's just not able to function properly. You end up with kidney diseases. So basically, so, you could be getting this from the aspartame and all this hidden foods, too. Yeah, but it's not in such high quantities as in here. The aspartame in here... It's actually, each for each gram of aspartame in a diet soda, it's 200 times more sweet than regular sugar. 200 times more sweet. And they, so they put, they put a lot of it in, like more in here than you would get in like most products that you probably did, but sure. There's a lot of problems with it, but they haven't ruled it off the market yet. Because people like it a lot. So, I thought this was pretty funny. Unfortunately, 100% of people who drink water will die. It's true. <laughs> They want you to believe, right? It's like, why not live happy and enjoy our lives? Like, why not drink your soda and be happy? Well, this is why diet soda causes obesity, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, kidney problems, and a number of metabolic dysfunctions. And also, when drinking soda regularly, you're missing out on the health benefits of water, which are what I'm going to go through next. So, water, now moving on to the next handout. And this is, these are really the handouts I gave you are like oh, almost a full outline of my Oh, there was two of them. I was hoping they'd kind of cross and everybody would get, where'd they go? Oh, okay. The magic potion. Okay. No, that's the one you got. We've got yeah, one about the weight. Water is the magic potion. Oh, that's the one we got. Yeah, water is the magic potion. All right. Okay. So, the magic potion, it's been called the magic potion for permanent weight loss. Eight glasses a day keeps the fat away. <laughs> I like that. Because water, water suppresses appetite naturally. It helps the body metabolize stored fat, reducing fat deposits, and keeping food retention at bay. And, well, let me just explain that just for a second. Um, helps the body metabolize stored fat. Our fat is metabolized in our livers. That's where our livers, one of its jobs is to make energy out of fat and other things. When our kidneys aren't performing to high, highest function, our livers will actually kick in and start working with the kidneys to filter out the waste and toxins. But that, when it's kicking in and helping the kidneys out, then it's not doing its job and making energy out of the fat deposits and things that are in our bodies. So by drinking more water, we're helping our livers to do their job, which is to provide energy for us from the fat deposits and other things that we eat. An overweight person needs more water than a thin person. So just FYI, for you guys' information, eight, eight ounce 
cups of water. I'm sure you've all been doing it so far. <laughs> yeah? But if you are more than 25 pounds overweight, you're supposed to add another glass of water for every 25 pounds of weight you, overweight you are. So you just need to add another glass for that much. <laughs> Jenny, what are you saying? <laughs> you don't want to know. She's, you She's saying want she needs to up her water and taste peanut butter. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not that it's water. But you know what? I don't have the I don't have the energy to drink anything else. Like I'm usually one that has I have chai tea and I have my coffee and I have my diet Mountain Dew. I don't have, have any energy. room in there for anything <laughs> else. That's why you don't have the energy. <laughs> She's drinking all the time. I got water in there. So I can see you say you don't you don't have no the desire for any of it. Water. Yeah. So some of the health benefits of water, everybody knows these, moistens the mouth, regulates body temperature, lubricates joints. Actually, water is supposed to be a natural um, painkiller for like arthritis and pains of your joints because it lubricates your joints. And so it's it's a natural remedy for an achy back between the discs and your spine. It, the water will be stored there. Helps prevent constipation, carries nutrients and oxygen cells to the blood system. The breakthrough point. So this is like the point that you get to when you've drunk enough water, you drink your eight glasses of water a day, and your body no longer craves it or needs it, and it's just functioning at full performance. When it's functioning perfectly, your endocrine glands function properly, fluid retention is alleviated, because when you're not drinking enough water, in between your cells, the extracellular space, is collecting up water. And you can tell because you'll see it, it'll result in like swollen parts, like your ankles and your wrists and your face. Have you guys ever looked in the mirror and seen your face is a little puffy and you're like, why is my face puffy? It's because you're retaining water. For me, I'm like always retaining my ankles anyways. <laughs> but, <laughs> I know, it's pretty bad. But um, anyways, so it, uh, alleviates fat. Fat is used as fuel because the liver is free to metabolize the fat. And your natural thirst returns. We all have a natural thirst level, Tangy. <laughs> and it'll return if you quit drinking all the rest of the stuff and start eating water. A loss of hunger almost overnight. You wake up one day and be like, oh my gosh, like, I'm not hungry anymore. Like, you're not like, <laughs> you're like starving all the time. You know, because you're dead. <laughs> Make you want to eat more. So I eat worse foods because my day. Yeah, so you'll, you know, crave food naturally. Anyways. I know, but is it really? It's like battery acid. But I don't. Breakthrough point. If you stop drinking enough water, your body fluids will be thrown out of balance and you may experience fluid retention, unexplained weight gain, and a loss of thirst. So I thought I'd bring up weight gain and talk about weight more with water and things since you guys are you know, working on that right now, instead of focusing on body systems and things. So anyways, that's it. That's the whole presentation. Now you know about soda and water and the differences between them. I hope this information was helpful, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I like the trick with the cans, too. Isn't she awesome? I'm like, really that project. <laughs> I need that. It's crazy. So basically, what I'm going to talk to you about is goals. I know you're all thrilled, right? Yes. Just not your <laughs> Um, we're going to talk a little bit about why we should set goals, and has anybody ever set one and not kept it? <laughs> Shock, right? Surprise, surprise. And, and so we think, well, I'm not going to, I didn't set any goals this year, because why should I? I've never kept them, right? Yeah. So we, we get discouraged because we fail, and we don't do well, so we're going to try and figure out a system that will help us to be more successful. And I have a couple of videos. I'm just going to tell you about this first one. It talks about patterns, which we're talking about habits and how hard it is to change. And so it's, it kind of uses patterns instead of habits interchangeably. But this goes really quickly. Oh, my speakers. Yeah, it was all um, So just, just watch fast, OK? <laughs> watch fast. Yeah, because it really, it, I had to watch it a couple of times. Thank <laughs> you.
I got them. Okay, good. I'm like, I have chairs. I didn't know she was ordering them. Did she get you because she went to just... They're pretty nice. I, I hope so. They're the cheapest ones. <laughs> <laughs> they they look like the other stem. I know. I, I think they were new on their side. So anyway. Yeah. All right, so here's your first little... So have anybody ever fell and had your self-esteem um, damaged by that? If you haven't made the connection and we don't know how to do that. So basically we're going to try and put together a formula so that we'll be more successful. This next video I have, has anyone ever heard of Zig Ziglar? He's, he's quite a famous motivational speaker. And he's going to talk a little bit about a formula for goals and we're going to follow that formula a little bit. Um, just as a warning, this was made several years ago. You'll love the 70s, 80s hairstyles and stuff. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but he's, he's actually really a great speaker. Um, I heard him in person once. Besides those hairstyles, look the back. They are. <laughs> should have kept all the clothes. We should have, because it's... it's I really want to talk good. a little bit about goals. On the line of how do you lose 37 pounds and write a book. I'm just going to kind of give you that as an example. For 24 years of my adult life, by choice, I weighed well over 200 pounds. I say by choice because, you see, I have never accidentally eaten anything. <laughs> I mean, it's always been deliberate. And when I choose to eat too much today, I have chosen to weigh too much tomorrow. You can choose to set goals and realize your potential, or you can choose not to set them. Now, if you choose not to set them, you've got to understand that the consequences are not going to be good down the road. For 24 years, I was going to lose that weight. As a matter of fact, in 24 years, I lost several thousand pounds of weight. How many of you already know exactly what I'm talking about? But it wasn't until I wrote it down, put a date on it, listed the obstacles I had to overcome, identified the people, the groups, the organizations I needed to work with, spelled out a plan of action, set that time limit in there, and identified all of the benefits to me. It was only when I did that that the goal became a reality, and I lost the weight. For 10 or 15 years, I was 
going to write a book. You know anybody who's going to do just a whole lot of things, folks? I was going to write a book. But it wasn't until I got busy writing the book and writing the plans first before the book ever materialized. Now, if it sounds like I'm trying to sell you on having goals, how many of you are getting close already? How many of you are becoming convinced right quick like that you need to have those goals? There's no question about it. The immortal J.C. Penney many, many years ago said, give me a stock clerk with a goal, and I'll give you a man who will make history. But give me a man without a goal, and I'll give you a stock clerk. Now, the interesting thing is goals do not care who has them. Let me give you a classic example of the way they work. In 1950, a war-torn, devastated Japan, a nation which had lost an incredibly high percentage of its young men, their cities were in ruins, they'd been bombed out, but in 1950, they got together, they meaning industry and government got together and set a goal. The goal was we're going to be the number one nation in the world during the 1950s in the production of textiles. In 1959, ladies and gentlemen, they accomplished that objective. In 1960, they set another goal. We're going to be the number one nation in the world in the production of steel. Now, when you understand there's no iron ore in Japan of any significance, there's no coal of any significance there, we're going to be the number one nation in the world in the production of steel, it seemed like an absurd goal, and yet they reached their objectives. They had taken all of the steps. In 1970, the Japanese set another goal. They said during the 70s, we'll be the number one nation in the world in the production of automobiles. They missed it, folks. One year. It took them until 1980. In 1980, they set another goal. And this time, their goal was, we're going to be the number one nation in the world in the production of computers and electronics. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, you absolutely must have those goals. You got to write them down. You got to put a date on it. You got to identify those obstacles. You got to identify the people, the groups you need to work with. You got to find out what it is you need to know. You got to develop a plan of action and you got to write it down what's in it for me. Now, that's the formula that I have just given you, pure and simple. Now, if I were to ask you what three times three was, there isn't a person here who could not instantly answer it. But if I were to ask you what is 5,128 times 2,165, odds are enormous, but very few of you could pop out the answer that quickly. But if I were to say to you, get your pencil and paper out, figure it out, then all of you can figure it out. Why? You know the formula. Now, you see, if you know the formula, it really doesn't make any difference, ladies and gentlemen, what the goal really is. When I started to write the book, I took precisely the same steps that I'm talking about. I wrote down the objective. I wrote down the time I completed or expected to complete the book. I identified the obstacles there. And yes, I know this is repetitious. It's the mother of learning. I wrote out and identified the people, the groups, the organizations I needed to work with. I devised a plan of action to do it. I spelled out what I needed to know, and I wrote it all down, what's in it for me. All right, so he thinks that if you know the formula, you'll be successful, right? You think he's right? If you do it. If you do it. Um, has anyone ever heard of SMART goals? SMART goals. Mr. Mr. Harris, no? No, it's my oh, I'm sleeping back here. <laughs> you oh, the back row that, for a reason. I assumed when I was the last one here. <laughs> I assumed that there would be goals that you can achieve. I do not know, though. That's okay. I just thought maybe you would. We're keen, we're keen in education. I thought maybe you would. Smart goals. <laughs> smart goals. A lot of the teachers are using smart goals. A lot of the um, educators, the supervisors, are using smart goals for their employees. A lot of the big businesses are using SMART goals. When we were in Melbourne, we just did this presentation earlier tonight. Circle 4 had worked with their employees about SMART goals. So that's what we're going to talk about basically today is SMART goals. And SMART, that means our goals, each of the letters in the, in the word SMART stand for something in how we need to write a goal. Most of us are used to saying things like, 
I want to lose weight. Is that a goal? It can be, right? Because I want to lose weight. A goal is something you want, or maybe it's something you need. I want or I need to save money. Is that a goal? Is it a smart goal? Absolutely not. Because it doesn't meet the criteria or the formula that we're looking at. So, you're going to have to work a little bit to unscramble your words to figure out what those are. And they, each of those words starts with the letters S-M-A-R-T. Sorry, no. Well, I guess I could hand you books. There are a whole bunch of books around here. Does anybody want a book to write on or are you good? Guess what? The lead just fell out of my country. <laughs> well, we'll get you another one. I think you That's why I wonder if I. That's why. Yeah, but you know what? It's I remember him there on the bottom one. You should take. <laughs> oh, Angela's being an old cheap back here. Be nice. I'm so not surprised. I'm not surprised you're normal cheap. That wasn't that was a cold. <laughs> yeah, I should mark that off today. Hey, I've seen the library. It's yeah. It's <laughs> it's not not a Cindy is just falls into my three year plan. So yes. <laughs> Absolutely what I do daily. So okay. Okay. not personal work. No. It's required. <laughs> Otherwise it wouldn't be there. I don't know. Hey Tracy, my turn to cheat. Oh, no, there's one I can't figure out. I can't But never mind. <laughs> So goal is something we want to accomplish, something that we want to happen. That's what we're going to talk about. Thank you. How did you know that was something we wanted to figure out? How did you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's start with the first one. What's our first word? Specific. Specific. So when I say I want to lose weight, is that specific? No. no. Why not? Because you know. Okay, so I want to lose 10 pounds. Much more specific. Okay. Um, what if I want to become more healthy? Okay, what does that mean? Because to some of you that might mean lose weight, and to some of you that might mean to eat better, and to some of you that might mean to put your new diet coke. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that, but it, it's not specific. So I, so I don't know what that really means. So if you tell me that goal, I don't get it, right? And I know I'm slow, but still, I don't get it because it's not specific. So any goal that you write needs to be specific. And this doesn't just mean with fitness or wellness. You can do this with anything. Okay? You can do that with anything. So what's the second one? Measurable. Okay. If I say I want to run faster, is it measurable? No, you have to say I want to run a mile in. Right. Minutes. So it's better if you say I want to be able to run a mile in 10 minutes. Because I can measure that. If I say I want to run a marathon, do I just want to run it or do I want to finish? Those are two different things. And are they measurable? Well, if I say I want to finish, then yeah. But what does run mean? Because I can, I can run pretty darn slow when I'm tired, <laughs> right? Am I still running? So make sure it's measurable. It needs to be specific and measurable. What does the A stand for? Action oriented. Action oriented. And I think this is the one that we forget about or that we miss. So we're going to talk about it last. Is that okay? Yes. So what does the R stand for? Realistic. realistic. Have you ever set an unrealistic goal? Yeah. Yeah. Never. Okay. So, so most of us think, well, I'm going to lose 10 pounds this week. 
Is that realistic? <laughs> no, it's not. Did it take you more than a week? To put, well, maybe not at Christmas. But in reality, <laughs> okay, so it needs to be realistic. It needs to be something you can achieve, but it needs to be not something you're doing right now. Okay? Ansel, do you get to read a lot? No. Oh, yes, she Cindy. does. She sits up <laughs> at work. No, but I feel like Misty Ball and I agree. <laughs> so. But if you do that all the time, and you set that goal to read another book or more books or whatever, two more, is that going to be realistic for your time frame? It might not be. But you need to know. What if I'm going to say that I want to exercise for three hours a day? Is that realistic? I can barely get 30 minutes in. Are you kidding me? Right? So it has to be realistic. Don't try to do something that's never going to happen because what does it say you have to do? Fail. Fail. And are you going to keep going? No, you're just going to quit. Okay? And the last one, T, is time. Okay? I went back to school to get my master's degree. So did I set a goal to just get a master's degree? Sort of. But did I have a time on it? Did it need to be before I was 80? <laughs> I almost waited that long, right? But... What did, if I wanted it when I was 25, did I hit my goal? No. Right? So when do you want to do it? Okay. I want to lose 10 pounds. Uh, can I quit there? By when? Okay. Or I want to be able to jog three miles by July. That gives me a time frame. Okay. So make sure it has a time. It doesn't have time. It doesn't mean anything. And... Because most of my experience comes from a school setting when I worked with kids and we talked about goals. A lot of the things they would say to me is, oh, I want to get good grades. Is that a smart goal? Absolutely not, because I don't want good me. When I was I said to them, I don't want good me. Does that mean straight A's? Does that mean D minuses so you get the credit because you're passing? What does your mother think good grades are? Because it's all different. So you and then when? When you're in fifth grade or when you're in eleventh grade? So it has to have time. If you don't have a time, it doesn't make any sense. Okay? Does that kind of make sense on those smart goals? So the last one, action. Okay? So I have a goal and I'm trying to make it a smart goal. I want to be able to run a 5K in less than 35 minutes by July 4th. Is that a smart goal? Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I had a pretty good goal. I had really think. Okay, but where is the action? You have to say by increasing this many miles per day. Okay, because I can't just say I want to do it. Because by the time you start in June, you're probably really not going to make it. <laughs> I have to have some sort of an action. How am I going to move from where I'm at now to where I can do that by the 4th of July? I have a plan. I have to have a plan. I have to have an action. I have to say by jogging two miles three times a week, or whatever it is. Same thing with eating. Well, I want to eat healthy. Really? Don't we all? Right? Is that going to happen? Probably not. How am I going to do that? And what is the action? I had a lady in Melford, and she had a pretty good goal. It was that she wanted to eat one fruit every day for the next three weeks. Okay? But where is the action? Okay, she wants to eat it, but where is the action? What does she have to do to make it happen? She has to make sure she has food in her house. Maybe she has to um, have it cut up. Maybe she has to take it to work with her. What's the action? So do you see why we miss that? It's easy to miss. But we're not successful if we miss that action part. So does that, does that kind of make sense on those? Yes. What I because the same idea, without doing something you're not going to get around to. I took a fruit and vegetable tray, just those little party trays, cut a bunch of, bunch of fruits and vegetables and put it in the fridge, and it's easier to actually, because my husband was like saying, well, I'll eat it if you'll make it for me. Right. Well, there it's already already ready, always. So you can, I'm too lazy to even set up an apple. Right. <laughs> Go figure, right? <laughs> I, I don't eat fruit because you won't feed it to me, it's basically. Yeah. <laughs> So you got to take that away from me, right? So what I want you to look at is two goals, two SMART goals. Make sure they meet that criteria. One that you can accomplish within the next three weeks, and it doesn't even have to have to do with the fitness program if you don't want it to. And one, and I put four months, and it's actually five, so I didn't count right. 
don't know. It, <laughs> sometimes it happens that way. So should we scratch that four or put five? Yeah, put five because really let's have a right time frame here, you know. <laughs> of course we are past January, right? So February, March, April, May. Oh yeah. So oh, maybe that's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so make a smart goal. Write it down because the important thing is, and he talked about that in the video, is write it down. If you don't write it down, it's never going to happen. I'm just telling you right now, unless it's written down, it's not going to happen. I've read a lot of studies about people who write things down and put them on their mirror and they read it every day. And without actually trying to do anything, it works. The mind is amazing and it's incredible. But if it's not written down, it's never going to happen. So write it down. Kind of go through and critique yourself with that criteria, or ask someone that's sitting next to you, or all of them. Or just have you want to do this uh -huh. thing. Well, and you can, we take you can take it home. But I want you to look at it and make sure that you're writing that, but don't forget the action. I'm not going to, you know, I'm talking to myself while in the car. Well, why? What am I going to do so I won't? Put it in the back seat or <laughs> turn it off so you don't know. Because if I keep forgetting, I keep losing points. I do not want to be the biggest loser. In that way. In that way, right? So, so think about those different goals. Um, anybody have questions about those goals? Okay, so just kind of to end on, I have a couple of things. Um, I mentioned Audrey's program, so kind of spread the word, and if you're interested, call the Extension office. Um, we're willing to do that. We always say that the Extension program in this county is the best kept secret. We really can do almost anything the public wants. So if you have an interest or a need, I had a group of women who meet call me the other day and say, hey, we, we need some discipline ideas for our kids. I went and met with them, and we can, you know, so we can really tailor things to whatever you want as a group. Leader. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're a Facebooker, you can like us, our Facebook page, and you can get information about 4-H and about Extension. And I do 4-H too, so anyone interested in helping out with 4-H, <laughs> this is my plug. I have a captive audience, right? <laughs> we can always use volunteers. Um, now we have three more weeks of this challenge after this one. And in between our first and the second challenge, there will be a week in between there. And that's when we will have our next class. So it will be the last week in February. Um, I think it's tentatively scheduled for that Tuesday, which I believe is the 26th, but don't quote me on that. Um, and at that point, then I will hand out the new challenge that you will be doing. Some of it's going to build on what you're doing. I'm going to tell you two, but not the others. So one of them, you're exercising right now for 30 minutes. So we're going to add to that that you do 10, 10 minutes of stretching along with that 30 minutes. So that's part of that. Um, right now, you're trying to give people compliments. Has anybody had trouble with that, or dares admit they have trouble with that? I will. You know, I talked about it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm bad at it. You know, it's, it's weird because you think that we do it. <laughs>
any other questions, concerns? I this is the first time with I've done this wellness program with the community. So any feedback that you can give me, I'm perfectly willing to take constructive criticism. I really don't get offended easy on it. <laughs> so that was like you're right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, keep sending me your points on Monday. Is everybody getting their emails? Mm -hmm. Had some problems at first. I think we've resolved most of this. Did how many of you did not get a text today to remind you about the meeting? Oh, if you not. didn't get one, I got one. But I, yeah, but what I'm wondering is, I didn't get something saying that. That was here, or else I missed it. I was apparently didn't read the text. I just saw a reminder. Julie, I'm with, with you. I didn't read it. But I was either. I was in the middle of it. I saw reminding you of the meeting, so I didn't read it anymore. That's all I It should have been on the email. I'll look back on the email. So if you did not get a text, I just tried that, and if you did not get a text, that means that I don't have your cell phone number. And so if you want to write it down for me before you leave, that would be great. I thought that's, a lot of people will just be reminded easier by a text, because not everybody checks their email every day, every 10 minutes, right? Just me, I'm kind of like that. Um, so that's a couple things. All right, so who got all of their points for both weeks? Okay, this is this is who I have, so tell me if I'm right. I have that Jenny did, and Jason Shire, who's couldn't be Jason. Um, Ray Lynn, Laurie, Brianne Harris, and is that all? Oh, oh, Misty. Yep, yeah, I actually have yours. <laughs> no, it's there. I just forgot me. No, oh, it's right there. It's on me. <laughs> so, I counted wrong because I looked at my thing wrong, but I do have. I don't know, but I still think I'm short. I have four of these, and I think there might be six of you here. There's five of you. So if you didn't get one, I was. It's not that great of a prize, but we've only been into it for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and and it's, it's a good healthy snack because I'm finding that that's where a lot of the trouble is, is with our snacking. If we sit down, we can kind of watch what we're doing, but it's in the middle of the day when the floor is full of chocolate. Yeah, so this is a bottle of water and some yogurt and a string cheese. So if you got that, pick one of these up before you leave.
but I'm motivated now, right? Yes, sir. Yes. All right, I promise you no more than an hour. Look at that, I have three minutes left. <laughs>